Michigan International Speedway is the opening stop on both the Hark USA and Canada tours. The track was built just south of the small town of Brooklyn, which is part of Jackson County in the Irish Hills of southeast Michigan. The Irish Hills are named after the Irish migrant population that settled in the mid-1800s. This beautiful region has a number of hills surrounding kettle lakes that were formed during the retreat of the glaciers in the last ice age. The nearest major community is Ann Arbor, 40 miles away, and the track is 70 miles from central Detroit and not much further from the Canadian border. It was built in tandem with Texas World Speedway, which is an exact copy of Michigan's layout. The same layout was also used as the basis of Auto Club Speedway in California, which was constructed in the 1990s. The track was built and owned by Lawrence H. Lopatin, a Detroit area land developer. The construction crew broke ground in the fall of 1967, and it cost about $5 million to make at the time, which would be about $40 million US dollars today, or $50 million Canadian. The design of the oval was led by Charles Moneypenny, designer of Daytona International Speedway and the owner of the richest name I think I've ever heard in my life. The track is a two-mile D-shaped oval with 18 degree banking in the turns, 12 degrees on the front straight, and 5 on the back straight. It also features a number of interconnected road courses on the infield and on the outfield outside the backstretch that were designed by Sterling Moss. 2.5 million cubic yards or 1.9 million cubic meters of dirt was brought in for the construction. If that dirt was formed into a cube, it would be almost 40 stories tall and fill about 10,000 mining trucks. In the corners, the track is 73 feet or 22 meters wide from apron to the wall. The USAC Champ Car Series ran the inaugural race at the track in the fall of 1968. It was a 250 mile event that was won by Ronnie Bucknam. In 1969, the first NASCAR Cup race was run and featured a hard fought battle between Leroy Yarbrough and Cale Yarbrough, unrelated, who was the eventual race winner. David Pearson and Richard Petty shared the podium. Later that year, the Cup Series returned for NASCAR's only attempt at a 600-mile event outside of Charlotte Motor Speedway. Unfortunately, the event was plagued by rain and had to be shortened due to darkness. Since then, the track has changed hands a number of times. The original owner's company of raceways, American Raceways Inc., went bankrupt in 1971. Entrepreneur and racer Roger Penske purchased the deed for the track and expanded the grandstands from its original capacity of 25,000 to over 150,000 seats and added a number of garages, facilities and shops. In 1999, Penske's group of groups of tracks was purchased and consolidated into ISC, the International Speedway Corporation. In 2019, NASCAR closed the acquisition of the ISC and merged their operations into one new company. The current seating capacity has actually decreased in recent years. Stands have been removed due to a lack of ticket sales, and the capacity have dro has dropped from upwards of 137,000 in the track's heyday to around 56,000 in present day. Overall, the track featured open wheel racing from its very start up until 2007, and was known for incredible racing. It featured some of the highest speeds in kart history, with pole speeds approaching 235 miles per hour. The track also remains a staple on the Cup Series schedule. It has featured 103 Cup races and counting, along with annual visits from the Xfinity and Camping World Truck National Touring Divisions and the ARCA Racing Series. It is the fastest track in NASCAR due to its wide sweeping corners, the lack of a tapered spacer requirement, and the smooth, grippy surface since the 2012 repave, and features exciting racing with three or four grooves available for drivers to choose from. Along with NASCAR racing, the track has also featured country and metal concerts in recent years and hosts the Formula SAE competition, where teams of engineering students from universities across Canada and the United States build formula-style cars and test them over a number of surfaces and challenges. Michigan holds a special place in my heart. In 2011, just before the repave, I attended the June NASCAR Cup race at Michigan with my uncle, grandfather, and a family friend. This, this was my first experience attending a NASCAR Cup Series event, and as of 2021, I have yet to attend another. The speed and noise of the Cup cars at full tilt down the front straight is not something I'll soon forget. I remember being in awe of the sheer size of the venue, because it is truly massive compared to any tracks in Canada. Michigan is also the home track of a longtime supporter of Hark, Jeffrey Spingai, who has been a part of the series since 2014. 
It will also be the home races for rookies Cynthia Van Klompenborg, James Gibson, as well as Jeffrey Fingai's father, J.F. As the only large oval on either Hark schedule, the races at Michigan have the potential to be exciting and fundamentally different. Slipstream and the large track width will lead to a lot of multi-lane close racing. It won't be quite flat out for the Hart competitors, but it will certainly be a big learning curve for the rookies, many of whom might not have experience outside of their local short tracks. And with only nine races in each season, drivers will not be able to afford a poor finish, so we should see a pair of ultra-competitive season openers. Be sure to keep an eye out for both races in the coming weeks.